What's up guys, it's Rasim from RaspberryTech.com and yes, this is another video, another Raspberry Pi related video. Now, this one is pretty exciting though. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking, since the Raspberry 3, this is a Raspberry Pi 3, since the Raspberry Pi 3 came out, you guys have been asking for another cluster computer video series. A lot of you guys found me through my original cluster computer series where I take four Raspberry Pi V Pluses, uh, put them together in a cluster, and uh, test out the performance, run some uh, programs where I used all the Raspberry Pis. You guys liked that video, I got a lot of views and a lot of subscribers from that series, so I'm starting another series, and this is video one of that series. Now I bought four Raspberry Pi B Pluses, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did in my other cluster computer video series. I'm gonna show you all the parts, we're gonna put it together, I'm gonna show you all the software, I'm gonna walk you step by step through everything so you, so you can create your own cluster computer using Raspberry Pi 3s. Again, there'll be a four Raspberry Pi cluster, using a Raspberry Pi 3s. If you guys are interested, follow along. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe so you guys can see more of these videos. Now, before I get started and I show you all the parts and we start building the cluster, I wanna talk about a project that I really wanna start, but I need your guys' support to start it. I wanna work on like a 50 to 100 Pi or even more cluster video series. I have a lot of Raspberry Pis, but I wanna get more. Uh, I'm pretty ambitious, I want, I want something big, but I need your guys' support. The way you guys can support me is by liking this video. If you guys like this video, I know that you guys will be interested in seeing something like that. And then I will spend the money and I will get all those parts and Raspberry Pis that I need to start that project. But again, like this video, share this video, it'll help me a lot. Without further ado, let's get started with the cluster. All right guys, so these are all the parts you're gonna need to create the cluster computer. Some parts you might not need, but I think it's cool. Now, what you will need is four Raspberry Pi 3s, right? These are the newest Raspberry Pis. I have four of them here. One of them I took out of the box, the other ones are in the box. And you will need a uh, switch. Uh, I recommend this Netgear switch here. I will leave a link to this switch in the description. This is the same switch I used for my previous cluster computer video series where I uh, created a cluster out of Raspberry Pi B Pluses. I will leave a link to all the products you see here in the description. So you need this so you can connect all the Raspberry Pis to your uh, network basically. And that's how they speak to each other through the network. And this I believe supports up to, up to seven. It's a port. One of those ports you're going to need to connect to your network, so you can connect up to seven Raspberry Pis using this one Netgear switch. Now, uh, what's not needed, but I think it's cool, is having a cluster case. This is the same case I use for my Raspberry Pi B Plus cluster. I'll give you guys an example of how it looks. It looks something like this. We're going to build it today. I'm going to leave a link to this case in the description. You will need some sort of way to power the Raspberry Pis. I recommend getting something like this. This is a USB uh, power uh, adapter. It's from Satachi. Or Sat I, don't, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Satachi. I'll leave a link to this one in the description. This is the one I use in my uh, Raspberry Pi uh, Bitcoin mining video series. I use this one. It is a powered USB hub, and it also serves as a way to power up USB devices. I recommend this one. I'll leave the link to this in the description as well. They have, they have a bunch of them you could get. They're pretty cheap. I think I paid 20 bucks for this one. You will need uh, patch cords, at minimum four of them. I have plenty of them. I get, uh, I bought this one for like $2 in uh, Home Depot, one foot uh, patch cord. You guys can find them anywhere. You can make them if you know how to make them. Now what's not needed, but I think it's cool because this is a uh, fan that's powered by this USB hub. You can use this to cool down the cluster. So I will be using this, you guys don't need it. I just found it to be cool and I had it because again, I use this and this in my Bitcoin mining series where I use a Raspberry Pi to mine Bitcoin. All right guys, so you will need four micro SD cards. This is a 16 gigabyte. It doesn't have to be 16 gigabytes. I recommend at least eight. You will need four of them. I think I paid like 15 bucks for this one, so you probably find them cheaper. And you will need uh, cables to power your Raspberry Pis. These are, I think, micro USB cables. Again, this is gonna connect to here and the other end to your Raspberry Pi. I like these because uh, they're sleeved, they're pretty tough, and um, I like the color, so that's why I purchased these. I'll leave a link to where you could get some in the description. Now, the only real tool you'll need is a screwdriver. If you're going to uh, go and purchase one of these cases yourself, you will need a screwdriver to put it together. Otherwise, it's pretty simple. All right, guys, so let's just start putting it together. All right, guys, so the first thing I wanna put together is the case and all the Raspberry Pis in this cluster case here. 
Again, I forgot the name of this case, but I use this for all my other cluster video series. I'll leave a link in the description. And I'm gonna fast forward through this process so you guys see me putting it together pretty fast. Okay, right, so the first thing we're gonna do now that we built our case is connect the ethernet cable or patch cord to our switch here. So we're gonna grab one, connect it to the back of the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna turn this over, actually it's on the right side, and connect the other end to the, the switch. And we're gonna do the same thing for the rest of the Raspberry Pis. Patch cord, back of the switch. All right, two more to go. All right, last cable. All right guys, so we got all the patch cords connected to our switch here. All we need to do is grab the power supply for our switch. So this power supply, we connect the other end here and all right, now we're gonna connect the micro USB cables from our Raspberry Pi to this powered USB hub here. And let's just untangle this one here. We're gonna USB part to here. Again, the other end to the Raspberry Pi. I'm going to grab another cable. One end to, from the Raspberry Pi, the other end to our switch. connect the other end of the power to this port here. This is what's gonna power this USB powered hub. Now, it's not needed, but I thought it was pretty cool. A USB fan, it'll connect here and it'll be powered by this USB hub. Let's turn it around this way. Actually, let's turn it this way. Yeah. And I, we could turn this around and it, it's gonna cool the Raspberry Pis. Not needed, but I thought it was cool and I had it laying around, so I figured I'd add it to, to this project. So we're gonna open up a browser here. And the first URL I wanna show you is a web page that I created on my website. It's called uh, raspberry-pi-3-cluster-supercomputer. It's in my raspberrypi.com webpage. This is the URL here. The URL will be in the description. We will be using this web page for all the remaining videos because it has everything we need here, all the links and all the code that we're gonna copy and paste onto the terminal. So the link will be in the description and 
Now we're going to navigate to this URL here. This is a Win32 Disk Imager. This is the program we're going to use to burn our Raspbian image onto the SD card or micro SD card, then set it up onto our Raspberry Pi. Now the link will be in the description. We're going to click on Files. We're going to click on Archive. We're going to click on the first link you see. Once you click on it, it should start downloading after this thing has finished moving. So I'm going to cancel the download because I already downloaded and installed mine. But it's pretty simple. Just download after it finishes downloading. Just install it, double click it, install, next, yes, whatever it asks you. Once you finish installing that, we're going to move on to the next URL. And this is www.raspberrypi.org forward slash downloads forward slash Raspbian. Links will be in the description. Now we're going to download the Raspbian image. This is the newest one created in March of 2016. And it's Raspbian Jesse. We're going to click on the download zip link. Click on it. It should start the download. Now, I already downloaded mine, so I'm going to cancel it once it does start. But once you finish downloading that here, we're going to move on to the next step. So the next step is to download something called PuTTY. We're going to download PuTTY by navigating to this URL here. The URL will be in the description. And uh, we're going to click on this link here for Windows on Intel x86 processors. Click on this first link. It should start the download. I'm going to cancel it because I already downloaded it. Now, this is one of those downloads you don't need to install anything. It's an executable file we're downloading. And once you click on the file, it should start the program. Now, I'm going to cancel my other download as well, the one I started earlier. Now, once we finish that, now we're going to burn everything onto our SD card. Again, make sure your micro SD card is connected to your computer. You will need one of those adapters. So get one of those micro SD card to SD card adapters connected to your computer. So now we're going to open up Win32 Disk Imager. It's the program we just downloaded and installed. Now before we select our image file, we have to extract it. So usually it downloads in the downloads folder. So navigate to wherever you downloaded your Raspbian image. Mine is in downloads. And uh, double click the file and drag that file to the desktop. It will extract it. We can't burn an archive file onto the SD card. So once you've finished extracting your file to the desktop, we can continue on to the next step. Now we're going to search for that file. We're going to click on this folder here in Win32 Disk Imager. And I'm going to navigate to the desktop. You're going to navigate to wherever you saved yours. This is the file here, Raspbian Jesse. I'm going to click on Open. And make sure your drive letter is selected to the right drive. It should select it by default unless you have like a USB flash drive. You want to make sure you disconnect all your USB devices if you have a USB flash drive connected. You only want to keep your uh, micro SD card uh, reader connected. So this is my drive letter for my micro SD card. And now we're going to click on write. And then we're going to click on yes. Now it's going to burn that image onto our micro SD card. I'm going to come back once that's finished. All right, guys, now that's completed. We're going to click on OK. Now we're going to take out our micro SD card from the computer, connect it to our Raspberry Pi. We're going to connect a network cable from our Raspberry Pi to our router, the same router that's connected to our PC, so we can remotely access our Raspberry Pi. Then we're going to power on our Raspberry Pi using the micro USB cable and connect it to a power source. So once that's finished, we're going to come over here. All right, the next thing we're going to need to do is open up PuTTY. We downloaded PuTTY earlier. Just navigate to wherever you downloaded PuTTY. You started. Now, PuTTY is the program that allows us to remotely access our Raspberry Pi. All it needs is the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. And as long as our Raspberry Pi is connected to our network, same network that our PC is connected to, we can remotely access our Raspberry Pi. We're going to be doing all our work on PuTTY. All right, guys, to figure out what your IP address of your Raspberry Pi is, all you have to do is go to like a search anything on your Windows that has a search and type in CMD and we want command prompt. So you could type in CMD and hit enter or search for command prompt. And uh, we're going to type in something in the command prompt. We're going to type in P-I-N-G, hit space, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, P-I, Raspberry Pi. By default, I think uh, Raspbian will call your Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so that's the network name for your Raspberry Pi. So all we're doing is uh, pinging Raspberry Pi and it should give us our IP address. So hit enter and it worked. 
So we're getting a reply back, and this is our Raspberry Pi's IP address. Mine's is 192.168.1.173. Yours will be different. So just jot yours down, remember it. And I'm just going to copy it. Uh, you can't copy it here. I'm going to close it. Mine's is, again, 192.168.1.1. So uh, jot it down, remember it, write it on a piece of paper, and we're going to type it here. So 192.168.1.173. Dot one dot one seventy three. Yours is different. Remember that. And we're going to click on open. And this is a potential security warning. Whatever. Just click on yes. Now it's asking us for a username, and the username is pi. Hit enter. The password is raspberry. So R A S P B E R R Y. And hit enter. Now we successfully logged into our Raspberry Pi. All right. So now we're going to open up our URL. Again, this is the URL I created. The link will be in the description. We're going to be using this URL or this web page for the rest of our projects. We may, it has everything you need here, all the links and step-by-step -step instructions, and it has all the code that we're going to copy and paste onto this terminal here so you don't have to type it in. It makes it easier for you and me. So all you have to do is copy and paste. Whatever I tell you to copy and paste, that's all you're going to need to do. You can, you can see it has one video right now because that's the only video I finished. Part, I only finished part one. We're actually working on part two right now. This is what you guys are watching. Once I finish part two and it's uploaded, I'm going to upload it to this page here. Again, it's www.rossmertech.com forward slash raspberry hyphen pi hyphen three hyphen cluster hyphen supercomputer. Link will be in the description. Now, now that we successfully logged into our Raspberry Pi, we have to start with installing MPICH, or I'm sorry, before we install MPICH, again, this is the, the installing Raspberry, we already went through some of these steps. We downloaded the Raspberry image. We downloaded Win32 Disk Imager. We burnt that image onto our SD card using Win32 Disk Imager. We connected our micro SD card to our Raspberry Pi. We connected our network cable to the Raspberry Pi. We connected a micro USB power cable to our Raspberry to power it on. We downloaded PuTTY. We opened up CMD. We found our Pi's IP address by typing in ping space Raspberry Pi. We opened up PuTTY. We typed in our Raspberry Pi's IP address. We typed in our username, Pi, and our password, Raspberry. We hit enter. Now we're at this screen here. Again, this uh, this web page will come uh, in handy when you guys want to search for something. All, every, all the information, including all the stuff and the links to buy everything, are in this page here. So we will be using it a lot. So now that we finished that part, we have to copy this code here, sudo config here. And what... This and we're going to paste it. The way we paste it is by clicking on terminal, then right clicking, and it will paste it automatically. Right click on your mouse, it will paste automatically. Then we're going to hit enter. Now, this is the Raspberry Pi software configuration tool. Uh, this says everything we're going to need. And now, uh, under here, it says expand file system. Expand file system is already selected, so we're going to hit enter. Hit enter. I'm sorry, we're going to make sure you click on our terminal. Hit enter and expanded our file system. The way that works is, uh, let's say you have a 16 gigabyte S micro SD card, it'll expand the file system to use the entire 16 gigabytes so you don't waste any space. So next thing we're gonna do is go to advanced options, right? Hit enter, and we're gonna change our name of our Raspberry Pi. Hit enter, okay. We wanna change it to this here, PI01, that's capital P, lowercase i01 so delete this capital p lowercase i 01 hit okay now we're going to go back to now we're going to go back into advanced options we're going to make sure that ssh is enabled enable ssh yes okay we're going to go back into advanced options and uh, we're going to split the memory and uh, how much memory should we give to the GPU? We don't need that much money. I'm sorry, we don't, we don't need that much memory for the GPU. We're only really using the CPU and we're not using the graphical user interface for the Raspberry Pi. So we're gonna give it 16, a, min, a minimum of 16. Then we're gonna hit okay. Now we're gonna finish the installation to finish the installation or the configuration, I'm sorry. We're gonna hit tab a few times till finish here is selected. Then we're gonna hit answer. Would you like to reboot now? Yes, let it let it reboot, that's fine. Close this again, and we're gonna reopen PuTTY. So open up PuTTY, typing, type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, 
168.1.173. Yours is going to be different. Just type in your IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Click on open. Uh, again, login is Pi. Password is Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Hit enter. We logged back in. The cool thing is I jotted everything down on this web page here. So if you guys didn't catch something, instead of rewinding the video, you can search it on this uh, web page web page here and it will be there and you can copy it and paste it. So, so that's why I created this uh, web page here. So it, it'll help you guys throughout this process. So now the next step, we're going to install something called MPICH. To do that, we're going to copy this code here, sudo app get update. This will update our Raspberry Pi with everything we need. Give it about a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes to run. Once it's finished running, I will come back. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this terminal closer to this page here. So the next thing we're going to do is make a new directory. So all we have to do is copy this code here. Copy it. R right click and it'll paste sudo. Sudo is giving you like uh, administrative uh, permission to do it. Hit space. MKDIR is making a directory. Hit space and we're calling the directory MPI ch2 so once we hit enter it's going to make that directory now we're going to we're going to move into the directory by copying this code here cd into this directory so paste it hit enter cd has changed directory and it moved us into this directory here so we're, we're in the directory now we're going to copy this code here sudo wget right and we're, we're getting uh, the actual program it's called mpich hyphen 3.2 so it's mpich 3.2 this is the newest version and uh, it's going to download the archive file the .tar.gz file so once we paste it here hit enter it should start the download download has completed now we have to extract the file but to extract the file we got to copy this code here tar uh, space xfz the, the name of the file .tar.gz so we're going to copy it but I forgot to add sudo in front of this. This won't work unless you add sudo. By the time you guys see this video, I'll have already corrected it. So we got to type in sudo first, S-U-D-O. Then I'm going to hit space, then I'm going to copy that code here. So if, if, if you don't copy or if you don't type in sudo before this line of code, it won't work. But, but again, by the time you guys see this video, I have already updated it probably on the website. So you shouldn't worry about it. Hit enter. It will extract. If it extracted, then you'll see something like this. If it didn't work, it'll give you an error message, basically. All right, so now that we did that, now we have to make a few directories. So we're going to copy this here. I'm going to copy this. sudo make directory hyphen sudo make directory home slash rpi mpi. Copy it paste it, hit enter. We just created a directory forward slash home. We created another directory in forward slash home called RPI, MPI. Now we're going to copy this line of code here and we're going to make some more directories. And I'm going to hit enter. We made a new directory in RPI, MPI. We called this one MPI hyphen install. So now we're going to copy the next line of code. We're making more directories. We don't have to do this a lot. So once we finish making directories, we're going to do more of the coding. So I pasted it here. So we're making directory. We're calling, calling it home. We're going to get a directory in the Pi directory called MPI build. So we're going to hit enter, create this directory. Now we're going to get a software called uh, G4Tran. I'm just going to copy this code and it should install the software. Copy it. Paste it. Hit enter. This will take like 10 or 15 minutes. So uh, if it asks you, do you want to continue typing yes, enter. Again, it will take like 10 or 15 minutes. I'm going to come back once that's finished. All right, guys, so that's finished. Now we're going to copy the next line of code here, sudo. And we're going to create another directory. And uh, by creating this directory, it's going to start installing some stuff here. And uh, it's going to uh, initiate MPI slash install. So this one will take a little while. It's probably like 20 to 30 minutes, maybe less, maybe more. But there are a few things in this uh, tutorial that are going to take a very long time, and this is one of them. So copy it, paste it, hit enter, and uh, be patient. It's going to take a long time. Don't be scared. It's normal. I'll come back once this part is completed. All right, guys, so now we're going to copy the next line of code is sudo make here. Copy it, paste it onto here, hit enter. 
this will start making everything that you need, like all the directories, I guess. It does a lot, and this is the one that takes, I think, the most time. So uh, this will probably take close to an hour, maybe less, again, maybe more. I'm gonna come back once that's finished. So don't be scared if you've been, if it's been doing it for like a long time, it's normal. So I'll come back once that's finished. All right guys, now that's finished. Now we're gonna copy sudo make install. This one will install everything. And this one will also take a long time. So don't be worried if it's doing it for a while, it's normal. So hit enter and I'll come back once. It is finished. All right guys, so now that's parts finished. We're gonna change directory. All you have to do is type in CD, hit space, two dots, hit enter, and it should take us back to our root directory. Now we're gonna copy this code, nano space dot bash RC. Uh, what this is gonna do is it's gonna open up a file that we need to update. So once we hit, once we right click it, we're gonna hit enter, and then we're gonna copy this code here from path to bin. We're gonna copy it, right? Then before we paste it, we have to scroll down, click on the terminal. You're using your arrow key, the down arrow key, hold it down till it goes all the way down to the last part of the page, right? When you're at the end of the page, hit enter so you give it some space from the last code. Then we're gonna right click and paste this path here up until the bin, path to bin, right? So now all we have to do is uh, save the file. To save the file, we gotta hold control, press six, right? Then press X while you're holding control. Now we're gonna type in Y, hit enter, and we save the file. So now all we have to do is reboot. To reboot, we're gonna type in S-U-D-O space R-E-B-O-O-T, hit enter. It rebooted and we lost our connection to Putty. And we're gonna close it, we're gonna open up Putty again. I'm sorry, not not that one. We're gonna open up Putty again. We put Putty here, we're gonna type in our IP address of our Raspberry Pi, mine's is 192.168.1.173. Yours will be different. Hit enter, login is Pi, hit enter, password is Raspberry, so R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, hit enter, we're back in. Now, now we're pretty much close to the end here. So we're gonna copy this bit of code here. Copy it, paste it, right click to paste. Now, what this code is gonna do, it's gonna test whether or not uh, whatever we just did in the video was successful. If we did everything correctly, then we should see our uh, Raspberry Pi name printed out. So hit enter and it worked. Pi01 is our Raspberry Pi name. Pat yourself on the back. Everything that you did worked, so we could continue on to the next step. Now, the next step here is uh, we're going to install something called MPI for Pi. To do that, we're going to copy this link here, All right? Paste it. Then, what it's going to do is it's going to download MPI for Pi version 2.0. It's a uh, archive file. So we're going to hit Enter. It's going to download the file. Now we need to extract the file. To extract the file. Again, I forgot to type in sudo. We're gonna copy this first here, this tar up until the GZ, copy it. But I should have added sudo first. I'm gonna correct it. By the time you guys watch it, it should be corrected. So type in sudo first, hit space, paste that code right there. This code is gonna extract our MPI for Pi version 2.0 file. So hit enter, it extracted a file. Now we're gonna change our directory here, CD going to change our directory to that file, the, the directory that the file created when we extracted it. So hit enter, we're in that directory now. Now we're going to install Python. So copy this code here, sudo aptitude install python dev, copy it, paste it, hit enter. And it will take like five to 10 minutes. I want to come back once that's finished. All right guys, so it should prompt you to continue. Type in yes, hit enter and I'll see you guys once it's finished. All right guys, so that finished. Now we're gonna build our Python here. Copy this line of code, Python space setup.py space build, copy it, paste it, hit enter. And this one shouldn't take too long. All right guys, that's finished. Now we're gonna copy the next line of code, sudo python setup uh, slash pi install, copy it. Oops, forgot the S. Copy it and paste it and let it go. Now that's finished. Now let's copy this line of code here. Export 
Python path equals home slash pi slash pi for pi. I'm sorry, MPI for pi version 2.0. Copy that, paste it, hit enter. Now we are at the last part of this video, the last last line of code here, and we're going to copy it and paste it. Now this line of code here is going to test or judge whether or not whatever we did throughout this video worked. So it's going to print out a few different uh, things here, and it should print out hello world a few times, and with our uh, with our pi name, and if if it if it's printed out successfully, that means everything we did was successful and if, if it printed it out for you everything worked for you and you should pat yourself in the back so we're gonna hit enter this is what you should see here hello world i am process zero of five on pi one then hello i am hello world i am process one of five on pi one and it goes up until uh three of five on pi one if you see this here that means everything's working pat yourself on the back now again in the last video we worked on pi one what we're gonna do is uh, instead of doing what we did uh, in the video two for all the other pies, we're just going to copy the image file onto our desktop and copy it to all the other pies. It'll save us a lot of time and we could move on forward to do that. Make sure you disconnect that SD card from video two, the one you worked on video two, disconnect it from your Raspberry Pi and connect it to the computer. Open up uh, Win32 Disk Imager. Then you're going to make sure that right driver ladder is selected. You're going to click on this folder, right? Uh, you're going to select the directory you want it saved in. I want it saved in the desktop. You're going to give the file a name. I'll call it R-A-S-P-I, or sorry, Raspberry Pi 3 Cluster Supercomputer. Then you're going to hit open. Then we're going to click on read. Once you click on read, it's basically going to uh, copy that file and, and save it onto the desktop. The reason we're doing this is to save time. All we have to do is copy this image, burn this image to the SD cards of our other pies, and we can move forward. We don't have to repeat step twos, uh, I'm sorry, video twos for all our pies. We're pretty much going to be uh, moving forward from there. All right, guys, so once that's finished, uh, saving the copy of that uh, image file to your desktop, it's going to look something like this. The way you burn it to the other SD cards is the same way we burn Raspbian. It's pretty simple. Just open up Win32 Disk Imager, and you're going to do this for all the Pi's SD cards. Remember, there's a total of uh, four. We already finished one. Now we're working on the other three. All you have to do is make sure your SD cards is connected. The SD card you want to copy this image to, you have a total of four. Remember, remember first one we just finished. We, now we're going to copy this image to the other three. So connect the other SD card to your computer. Click on this folder icon, navigate to the directory of your image. Mine is on the desktop. Click on this uh, drop down box. Make sure you select this uh, dot here so it shows all files and folders. Highlight or click on the file, your, your image file. Click on open. Then you're going to click on write. I'm not going to do this because I already did it, but uh, you're going to do this for all the other uh, SD cards of your Raspberry Pis. Once you finish doing that, make sure you connect all the SD cards to their pies you connect the power to the pies the pies are connected to a switch that switch is connected to a router the same router that's connected to your pc once that's finished we can move on to the next step all right guys so everything has to be completely connected all your raspberry pies have all the sd cards all the sd cards have this image burnt onto them you have the power connected to them you have the Raspberry Pi is connected to the switch. The switch is connected to a router. That router is connected to the same PC. All right, guys, so now we're going to open up the browser and we can navigate to this URL here. This is my web page. I created this page for this uh, specific tutorial. It's www.rosmertech.com forward slash raspberry hyphen pi hyphen three hyphen cluster hyphen supercomputer. Link will be in the description. And we're going to be using this page to uh, finish this uh, cluster. So. Navigate to this page, we're going to minimize the page. We're going to open up PuTTY, and we're going to type in the IP address of our Raspberry Pi. Uh, we know it's, uh, well, I know mine. You know yours, type in yours. Mine is 192.168.1.173, right? Hit enter. Pi is the username, Raspberry is the password. 
All right, now we're logged in, so let's just minimize this here, put that there, open up the web browser, minimize the page, and we're gonna put it on the other side. All right, so now what we gotta do is, we gotta figure out what the IP address of our Raspberry Pis are, the other ones, actually. We're gonna first copy this code, copy it, paste it here. All right, now that that's finished, we're gonna copy this code here, copy it, paste it. All right, now we're gonna copy this here, and we're gonna paste it. This line of code is gonna allow us to install Nmap, Nmap is a program that will allow us to find the IP address of all our pies. So before we hit enter, you have to delete this capital S and change it to a lowercase s. By the time you guys watch this video, you might not need to because I, I will already updated the website. But if you see that there is a capital S there, just change it to lowercase s and hit enter. And it should be done in a few seconds. Type in Y, hit enter. All right, so that's done. Now we can start using Nmap. If you guys want to figure out what the IP address of your current Pi is, you could always copy this code if config and hit enter, and it'll give you the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. As you can see, it's right here, 192.168.1.173. All right, so now we want to find out our IP address for all our other Pi's. We're going to copy this code to do that. Copy it and paste it, hit enter. All right, guys, so this is the IP address of all our other Raspberry Pi's. It'll show you the name here, Raspberry Pi Foundation, and the IP address is under it. Uh, one of them is here, 192.168.1.66. The other one is here, 192.168.1.74. Then we got 192.168.1.175. And the final one is 192.168.1.74. Yours is gonna be different, copy yours down. What I'm gonna do with my Cluster, I'm going to keep this Pi as Pi 1, 192.168.1.1. Pi 2 is going to be 192.168.1.173. Pi 3 is going to be 192.168.1.174. And Pi 4 is going to be 192.168.1.175. I have a little bit of OCD. I want, I want them to be in number order. So Pi 1, this will be Pi 1, this will be Pi 2, this will be Pi 3, and this will be Pi 4. Now to do that, I'm gonna have to close Putty again. I'm gonna open up Putty. I'm gonna log into my Pi One, which is 192.168.1.1. I'm sorry, that 166. Yours is gonna be different. Whatever you chose for your Pi One, make sure you click on Open. Login is Pi. Password is Raspberry. Enter. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the host name of the other Raspberry Pi. So this is Pi 1, the dot .166 is Pi 1 for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna SSH into Pi 2. To do that, type in SSH space PI at, and the IP address of your Pi 2, mine's is 192.168.1.73, hit enter. All right, guys, to SSH into your Pi 2, just type in SSH, hit space, Pi, at, and the Pi's IP address. Oops. Pi, at, and the Pi's IP address. Mine's is 192.168.1.173. Yours is going to be completely different. Hit enter. Type in yes. Hit enter. Password is Raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. Hit enter. All right, so now to change the IP address, I'm sorry, to change the host name, we have to type in sudo raspi, R-A-S-P-I uh, hyphen config, C-O-N-F-I-G, hit enter. Now we're gonna scroll down to advanced options and we're gonna scroll down to host name, hit enter, hit okay again. Now we're gonna change it from pi one to pi two and hit enter. Hit tab a few times till finish here is selected, then hit enter again, hit enter yes. It's gonna reboot. It rebooted us and kicked us off of uh, Pi 2. Now we're back to Pi 1 as you see right here. Now we're gonna SSH into Pi 3. To do that, type in SSH space Pi at and the and the IP address of your Pi 3. Mine's is 192.168.1.174. Hit enter, type in yes, hit enter. Password is Raspberry. Answer. Now we gotta type in sudo, hit space, then raspi-config, hit answer. Scroll down to advanced options, 
scroll down to host name. Okay, hit enter. Uh, change the one to a three. Now we, we name this pi03, hit OK, hit tab a few times till uh, finish is selected, hit enter, hit enter again. Now we kick this out of pi3, we're back to pi1. Now we got to SSH into pi4. To do that, again, type in SSH, hit space, pi, at the IP address of the pi4, mine says 192.168.1.170. Hit enter, type in yes. Hit enter. Password is Raspberry. Hit enter. Now again, sudo space pi at, I'm sorry, <laughs> sudo raspy hyphen config. Hit enter. Scroll down to advanced options. Hit enter. Scroll down to host names. Hit enter. Enter. Change the one to a four. Tab a few times, so finish is selected, hit enter. Yes, it kicked us out of four, and now we're back to one. And we successfully uh, named all our pies. And uh, you, gotta, you got to jot down the name of your pie with, with its correct IP address so we can uh, move forward. Now, the next step is to uh, edit this file. This is called machine file. The way we edit the file is copying this code here, pasting it, and we're going to hit enter. Now we gotta type in the IP address of all our Pi, starting with Pi 1. Mine is 192.168.1.166 is my Pi 1. Hit enter. Now we're gonna type in Pi 2's IP address. Mine is 192.168.1.173. Hit enter. Type in the third one. Mine is 192.168.1.173. Four, hit enter and type in the fourth one. This is Pi 4's IP address. So mine says 192.168.1.175. Make sure it's correct, no errors. Then we're going to save it to save it. Hold Control, type in 6x, type y, enter, and we're, we save the file. All right, guys, so now we're going to test a few codes. We're going to test this first code here. If if you when you paste it and you hit enter, if it gives you your pi's your pi one's IP address, then we're we're good. Now we're gonna copy the second line of code. We're gonna test that machine file to see if it works. We're gonna copy it. We're gonna paste it, and we're gonna hit enter again. Now it should have gave us uh, pi o pi o one through pi o four, but it only gave us pi o one. It says it says permission denied, but we can fix that. The way we fix that, and I'll show you in a second. You have to close Putty right now. Click OK. Open up Putty again. Type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi 1, Pi 01. Mine says 192.168.1.166. Hit enter. Pi is the username. Raspberry is the password. Now we're logged in. Now we're going to copy this line of code here. We're going to create a keygen. Copy it, paste it, hit enter. And it's going to generate a key. And you're going to keep hitting enter until you see something like this. So now we're going to copy this line of code here. It's going to change our directory. Hit enter. We're going to copy this line of code. We're going to go into this directory here. Hit enter. Now we're going to copy this line of code. And we're just copying a file into pi1. Hit enter. Now we're going to SSH into pi2. To SSH into pi2, all you have to do is copy this code here. Paste it. Replace the IP address with your Pi 2's IP address. My Pi 2 is 192.168.1.173. Then you're going to hit enter. The password is Raspberry. Hit enter. Now we got to copy this line of code here. Copy it. Paste it. Hit enter. And hit enter a couple of times until you see this. All right. Now we're going to copy this line of code here. CD into .ssh. Hit enter. Copy this code here. We're copying this ID into this folder here. Paste, hit enter. Now we're going to copy this code here. And we're, and we're copying a file in, into this folder here from pi01. Now, all you have to do is change this IP address here. Delete the, the, this one and, and give it your pi1's IP address. So delete the one and my pi1's IP address is 192.168.1. 
166. So I'm going to add 166 to it. Hit enter. And it's very important you guys add this dot. It might look like it was an error, but if you don't add that space and dot, this won't work. So if you see here when you copy, make sure you copy that space and dot. Now type in yes. So type in yes. Hit enter. Password is Raspberry. Hit enter. Now we got to copy this line of code here. Copy it, paste it here, hit enter. And we're going to type in exit, hit enter. Now we're, we successfully got kicked out of Pi 2, now we're in Pi 1. Now we're going to SSH into Pi number 3, copy this line of code here, paste it. Change the IP address to your Pi, Pi 3's IP address. Mine says 192.168.1.174. So I'm going to type in 174. I'm going to hit enter. Password is Raspberry. Hit enter. Then we're going to copy this line of code here. Paste it. Hit enter. Copy this line of code here. I'm sorry. we got to hit enter a few times. Go back to the terminal. Hit enter a few times until you see this here. Now we're going to copy this line of code, cd and 2.ssh, paste, hit enter, copy this line of code here, paste, enter, copy this line of code here, right? Hit paste, enter, change the IP address to your Pi 1's IP address. Mine's is .166, yours is different. Hit enter. Again, you have to add that space dot. If you don't add the space dot, it won't work. Type in yes. Hit enter. Password is Raspberry. Hit enter. Now we're going to copy this line of code here. Paste it here. Hit enter. Now type in exit. Hit enter. Now we're going to do this for Pi 4. So SSH into Pi 4. You could copy the code here. Copy, paste, change the IP address to your Pi 4's IP address. Mine says dot 75. Hit enter. Password is Raspberry. Hit enter. Copy this line of code here. Copy it, paste it, hit enter. Copy this line of code here. Copy it and I'm sorry, before we copy that line of code, we're going to hit enter a few times because it's generating the key. So once you see this, now we can copy this line of code, paste it, hit enter. Now we're going to copy this line of code, paste it, hit enter. Now we're going to copy this line of code here. Copy it, paste it. Change the IP address to Pi 1's IP address. So I'm going to delete dot 1. I'm going to add dot 66. Hit enter. Type in yes. Hit enter. The password is Raspberry. Hit enter. Now we're going to copy this line of code here. Paste. Hit enter. And we're going to, and we're going to exit. So type in EXIT. And we get to exit from the SSH. Now we're back to Pi 1. Now we got to copy this line of code. Again, always add that dot, the space dot. If you see a space dot, make sure you add it. So copy this here, paste it, and uh, we gotta change this IP address to Pi 2's IP address. So delete this dot 2, right? And type in your Pi 2's IP address, mine says dot 73. So I'm just gonna type in 73, hit enter. Copy this line of code here, paste, hit enter. Now we're going to copy this line of code here. Again, add that dot. Copy, paste, enter. I'm sorry, we've got to change the IP address first to the dot, to the Pi 3's, Pi 3's IP address. My, my Pi 3 is 192.168.1.74. So I'm just going to type 174, hit enter. Now we're going to copy this line of code, paste, hit enter. Now we're going to copy this line of code here, paste it, change this uh, IP address to Pi 4's IP address. Mine says dot seven five. Hit enter. Now we're going to copy this code here. Paste it. Hit enter. And we're pretty much done with uh, configuring the cluster. Now you guys should pat yourself on the back. We're going to run a couple more codes and the video is pretty much almost over. So now we're going to copy this line of code here. Paste. Hit enter. And we're going to copy this code. If we copy this code and paste it, and it gives us the names of all four of our Raspberry Pis, you successfully uh, 
did this, everything worked fine, and we can move on to video four. So hit enter, bam, pi one, two, th four, and three. Now you guys, if you see this, pat yourself on the back. Oh, the first thing we need to do is open up PuTTY, and we're gonna log into our Raspberry Pi one. Before you do that, make sure that your Pi is powered on, it's connected to your switch, the switch is connected to your router. That router is connected to the same PC that you're using right now. Now, type in your Pi one's IP address, mine says 192. 168.1.166 hit enter now the login is pi and the password is raspberry hit enter now we're going to open up a browser and we're going to navigate to this url www.rossmertech.com i'm sorry www.rossmertech.com right and it's raspberry pi 3 cluster this is the page I created for this video series. This page will assist us in all the videos. It has all the code that we need and every every link that you need to get this thing started. Now, we're gonna scroll down to the end of the page. Again, the link will be in the description. And this is the sample code or sample Python code we're gonna use and the, our cluster is gonna run it. Now, this Python code here is gonna find prime numbers and you give it a range. I give it a range from one to 101. You guys can change this range right here. Now, the first thing we need to do is, again, we've got to create this Python uh, file. To do that, we can type in nano, hit space. We're gonna give our file a name. I'm gonna call it test nine. You could, you could call it whatever you want. And then you have to add the dot .py. If you don't add the dot .py, it won't work. Hit enter. Now we're gonna copy this code here from def, and I'm sorry, we're gonna copy this code right here. Make sure you only copy this code and nothing else. Copy it, paste it, and again, you could change the range if you want. If you wanna change it from one to one million, you could do so. The bigger the range, the longer the program will take. And the, and again, the more, the more resources you will use. To save it, you're gonna hold down control, type in six X, type Y, hit enter. Now, now we get to copy this file to all our other Raspberry Pis. And uh, the way we do that is by copying this code here. Copy it, paste it here, and we're gonna change a few things. Make sure that the IP address is your Pi 1's IP address. I'm not gonna change it because this is my Pi 1's IP address. And we're gonna change our, our Pi, or I'm sorry, our file name here. I, again, we're creating test9.py. So we're gonna change this to a nine and uh, we're gonna hit enter. Password is raspberry. P B E R R Y, hit enter. I think I typed it wrong. So, raspberry, R A S P B E R R Y, hit enter. Okay, now we transferred this file to our Pi 1 in this directory. So now we're gonna do the same thing with uh, the other Pi's. Instead of copy and pasting, just hit the up arrow on your keyboard and it's gonna bring back the last code. All we have to do is change change the address here. So we want our Pi 2's IP address. Mine is dot .73, or dot .173, sorry. And hit enter. Now we're gonna hit the up arrow again, and we're gonna change the IP address to our Pi 3's IP address. Mine is dot .174, hit enter. Now we're gonna hit the up arrow again on our keyboard, change the IP address to our Pi 4's IP address. Mine is dot .175. Here's gonna be different, hit enter. Now that file is saved in all our pies in the same location. Now we can run this script to run the program. So when we copy and paste the script and I hit enter, by the way, before we hit enter, we gotta change the name of this file to the dot test8.py. So just delete the five, type in the eight. And uh, I'm gonna change this. We're actually gonna make this, a change this to a one instead of a, a five. And once we hit enter, it's gonna run the program and all the pies will run the program. So it's gonna act as one uh, supercomputer or one cluster computer. So hit enter, bam, it printed, it worked. It did it pretty fast. It printed out all the prime numbers from uh, one to I think I think 100 or 101. You guys can change the code. And pretty much you guys would do this with any uh, Python code. You can create your own Python code. You, if you guys don't know how to create Python codes, there are tutorials online. And you would follow the same steps I did, and uh, you, that, and you would be able to run your Python code on the cluster. So that's pretty much it, guys. 
I hope you guys like this video. But again, I will be working on a uh, pretty ambitious project again. It's a 100 or 200 pi cluster supercomputer. The way you guys you can support me is by liking this video. If you guys like that video, I know you're interested in it, and I will spend the money to get that project going. Now, that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like this video, please give me a like. If you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. I'm Rustin from RossmerTech.com, and thank you for watching.